All right, it's Clear Vision Wednesday time. I'm your host, Claudia Mühlenweg, uh, the creator of the Nazi Clear Vision Method. And today we talk about something that I get asked probably more often than anything else, eye floaters. So we talk about how you get these eye floaters, why do they even occur? And yes, age has to do something with it, but you know, every, the doctors always say everything is just because you get older. And that's not really the, the case and also how to get rid of them. And I have a super special guest and I'm gonna bring her on stage. My friend, um, Dr. Jane Nabu, welcome. Hi, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I'm very excited. Me hey. too, and this is such a great topic. So um, I'm gonna let you tell your own story, but really quickly. So Dr. Jane is a Chinese traditional Chinese medicine practitioner and a functional medicine doctor and has been doing this for I think almost two decades. And um, so tell us a little bit, because I know just like I wasn't a vision teacher from when I was 20, I had a different career before you did something different before. So tell us a little bit your own story. Why did you get into the whole medicine field and what did you do before? Oh, yeah, I'll try to be as brief because I feel like I've had three lifetimes. Well, I actually have. But uh, <laughs> so I actually started out as a professional ballerina. That was my career. So yes, and so fast forward, you know, you can't be a dancer for the rest of your life, right? So, you know, it's just like gymnastics. Those Olympic gymnasts, they retire at 18. I retired around 24, right? So, so fast forward, this happens and um, I end up somewhere in corporate and technology. And I worked for a large media company in Atlanta and I was very stressed out. So if you can imagine dancing all the time, like, like in the tip top shape, like an athlete to just sitting in a cube. So, and I wasn't used to like working 60 hours and stressed out. It was just completely different from being a dancer. And I started having some health issues, mainly gynecological. And long story short, I mean, I was in my 20s and I kept going from gynecologist to gynecologist and not getting any answers. And it was very frustrating to me. And one, one lady, she wasn't a doctor, but she was an ultrasound tech. She knew how frustrated I was because I was having very heavy, heavy periods and long periods, like 30 days. And she said, here, call this number. And it was to a bunch of naturopathic and Chinese medicine doctor counselors, like a whole holistic group outside of Atlanta. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm sick and tired of talking to these traditional conventional medicine doctors because they just keep dismissing me. And I was very unhappy about it. So I called and then that's when I got introduced to the whole realm of holistic healing from Chinese medicine to applied kinesiology, naturopathic medicine, everything. Remind, just to remind you, I still was not diagnosed from Western medicine. So I said, well, what's this good? Well, you know, I have nothing to lose. So I started healing myself. They gave me their diagnosis in their medicine and I'm still going to Western medicine doctors. Finally, as I'm a couple months in the naturopathic realm, Western medicine diagnoses me in my twenties and they say, it's the fifth gynecologist now. And he says, you have uterine cancer. I was like, what? Wait, no. Are, are you sure you're talking to me? Are you sure? And he's like, yes. And he was actually a retiring gynecologist. And he was so upset because the four other gynecologists missed that. And he listened to me and he said, I'm sorry, but you have like a tumor the size of a golf ball. We don't know what stage you're at. And for uterine cancer, we have to do a hysterectomy to stage it and tell you what stage cancer you have. I was floored and I had to make a choice then. Now I continued to do my holistic medicine. That was several months, but I said, how long do I have until you do that hysterectomy? He goes, okay, this was October. He goes, I'll give you a drop dead date of December. But mind you, I started working with those holistic people in June, right? So that's several months. So this was December of 2005. And he goes, that's your hysterectomy date. I go, can we extend it a little further? You know, I was gambling a little. He goes, no, that's it. No, no, no. And he knew what I was doing, but he said, I'll give you a few more months. Right before that hysterectomy, I had the best period ever. And, you know, being in your twenties, you don't ask for like 
hey, can you check that again? Can we do another MRI? I was just already sealed my fate and said, I'm going to just have to be okay with not having children and just move forward. Well, after that, you know, um, you know, the people at the holistic place, they were like, well, you know, you, we respect what you, you've got to do. Two weeks later, I got a call from the pathologist and the pathologist said, I, I was like, you know, cross my fingers going, oh my God, I hope, I hope I'm going to be okay. Well, she basically said, it's surprising. We don't see the tumor. It's not there. It's gone. And maybe you just have a little invasive, just a tad bit into the muscle area. So you don't really have cancer. It's kind of just, I don't know. It's gone. Strange. I was so excited. I was like, oh my God, I healed myself. Yes, but I had the uterus out, but still, you know, I mean, still had my ovaries because I fought for those, but that was it. And I quit my job. I said, goodbye. I'm going to acupuncture school. I'm going to go do this. Forget this. If I could heal myself, I could help other people. And that was the beginning of my career. And I never looked back. So Wow, that's that is, my story. <laughs> that is so fascinating. I've caught part of that story. I didn't know the whole thing, but wow. So mm -hmm. basically you had the hysterectomy, but it, the tumor was dissolved. It was gone. And that's usually not heard of unless you surgically remove it, right? And it wasn't right. removed. Yeah. yeah. So okay, so let's talk a little bit about because floaters is our topic today, and obviously very different from gynecology. <laughs> Um, but floaters, and you look at this from the traditional Chinese model. So in traditional um, eye care, it's like, okay, you get older. The bit, actually, let me get my little eye model here. This is always, you know, the vitreous humor. Let me see, this is my little eye model. So the vitreous oh, humor, nice. is, this is obviously just classic, but this is the gel-like structure. And it just, as you get older, it shrinks a little bit and little pieces fall, break off. And those are the little, you know, flying flies, as they're called, or the little floaters that when you move your eyes around, you see them moving around with it. And they really don't have any other options other than, um, I forgot the exact name of the surgery, but they really remove that vitreous and fill your eye with a fluid, which is super invasive. And it even doesn't guarantee that you that all the floaters are gone or they use a laser, which is not done that commonly. Um, and they try to kind of shoot the floaters, but they could also damage your retina. So that's risky and again, no guarantee that the floaters are gone or that they won't come back, even if they are gone. So, so how so how do you look at floaters in this case, but in generally at diseases um, of the eye or any other disease? How do you approach that versus the doctor who just looks at the symptom? Okay, let's shoot these floaters, or let's say, so sorry, you get older, there's nothing you can do. That's the other option that you hear. How do, would you approach this? Yeah, that's a really good question because we view things completely different, right? So I love it when patients come in because they, they've usually gone to a lot of eye doctors and they don't really get a good answer, just kind of like me with cancer. So, you know, they're going to say, oh, it's age related. There could be a torn retina. There could be what else? Inflammation. There could be some eye surgeries, bleeding. Um, they always say, oh, they're, this is from Western medicine, conventional medicine. You know, there's risk factors like you're over 50 or you're nearsighted. You had eye trauma. Um, there could be complications like or cataracts, ca complications from surgery or cataracts. Um, what's another thing? Diabetes um, and just eye inflammation in general, right? So that's Western medicine and here's all the different causes and here's all your risk factors. But in Chinese medicine, it's different. Those are, remember what I, they say, they call it floaters and what in conventional medicine. But for us, we see floaters as part of a pattern. So I have to explain that first. So we don't have the names of diseases and conditions like Western medicine. We use we diagnose by pattern. So I'll give you a metaphor. Like right now we're in the summer pattern. What happens in the summer? Well, I'm on the East coast. So right. The, the trees, I mean, it's hot, it's humid it, and people can wear shorts. What else? There's mosquitoes. So that's all part of the summer pattern. You know, everything's green here. Everything looks great. You know, you can go to the beach. It's great. Right. So that's part of the summer pattern. There's fall pattern. Fall pattern is something else. So now you understand patterns, right? Now in Chinese medicine, there are organs, organ systems. So 
Let me give you an example of the organ system the, and the element that has to deal with eyes. It would be the wood element. It would be a wood pattern, okay? And the organs that have to do with the wood pattern are liver and gallbladder. Because in Chinese medicine, each organ opens up to a sense organ, such as the stomach opens up to the nose. If someone has smelling issues, we look to the stomach. If someone has eye issues, we look to the liver. Someone has hearing issues, right? Those are sense organs. We look to the kidneys. So we look at the pattern of the liver and what are all the things that can happen in liver pattern. So in Chinese medicine, you can have many conditions. You can have, um, let's call it, um, I don't know, like hepatitis, liver cancer, um, cirrhosis of the liver. Um, all of those are conditions in Western medicine, right? But they all belong to one liver pattern. So you can almost treat all three of those different diseases the same with almost the same herbs, almost the same acupuncture points because it's part of a pattern. Does that make sense? Yeah, like so it, I'm curious. I just did a yoga retreat with Ayurveda and they looked at the, the three doshas, right? Pitta, Vata, Kapha. Mm -hmm. And they looked at like, where are your imbalances in those doshas? You know, if you're dry, like a Vata or Pitta, um, or right. you, uh, you, need, you need more moisture. So is the other pattern, so basically, let's say somebody has a lot of floaters in this case, and we use floaters as an example, because like you said, it, it's it's not just the floaters, they're part of a bigger pattern, like you said. That's right. So, let, so let's say that liver, do you call it liver pattern or wood pattern? It would be a pattern of the liver. And with that, there are like different diagnoses within okay. that liver pattern, so right? But it's still generally the liver. Is that basically an imbalance in this liver pattern or... Like, because we're looking at what is the root cause of these things? Is that the imbalance right. in that pattern or how would you describe that? Yeah. So let me give you some different liver pattern diagnoses for floaters. Okay. So there's, i um, trying to think off the top of my head, liver and heart blood deficiency. There's liver chi, I'm sorry. Yeah. Liver chi def, uh, deficiency, liver chi deficiency. There's spleen liver blood deficiency. There's um, uh, liver yin deficiency. Um, so I think those are about it. I might be missing one. So those are different diagnoses. So when someone comes in, how I diagnose them is we feel the pulses on each side. Remember 3000 plus years ago, they didn't have an MRI. They didn't have blood tests. So we have to diagnose by feeling the pulse and we have to have people stick out their tongue. And then we read, that's right. We read the tongue. And from there, you can tell the patterns. And then we listen to everything they say, but the pulse and tongue will help you diagnose. You can even have someone not talk to you and you can diagnose right away. They don't even have to tell you what's wrong. You already know. So does that make sense? So we diagnose yeah, yeah. by feeling the pulse, looking at the tongue and we go, it's any one of those patterns, but it's generally in the wood element, which would be, you know, liver. And it's usually a liver spleen disharmony. Usually I don't always want to say always because every person is different. It's customized to the person. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, so basically there is a liver imbalance, or but it could have one of the five different things that you said, like the liver blood deficiency or the liver yin deficiency, and those are the only two mm -hmm. I remember. It's uh, okay, <laughs> liver heart blood deficiency. Right. So it could be one of those, and that's what you actually treat. That's that right. Deficiency, correct? Um, Pretty so, much. Okay. I um, could give you an example of those. Give me an example. Female. Let's think blood deficiency, going through menopause, right? Oh my goodness. Someone said about five elements. There you go. Yes, this is all five element. You're having blood deficiency. When we say blood deficiency, I don't necessarily mean anemia, but it could be, you know, blood loss too. You'll have, definitely have floaters when you have blood loss in general. So anemia in Western medicine and then hormonal changes, you know, as a woman, you're you know, the, the hormones are going down. So that can also cause more floaters. 
as long as it's not eye trauma and all these other extra things, as long, if a person doesn't have all that stuff, then, you know, you look to the internal medicine of it. So how I'm going to treat the floaters is through internal medicine. I may need to balance hormones, right? I may need to check that person's digestion and see, are they eating foods that could be causing more hormonal imbalances? And, you know, everybody loves to drink wine. And so when you're a menopausal woman or in perimenopause, you're drinking a lot of wine, you're also drying up your liver yin and you're messing up the hormones and you're wondering why you're having more floaters, you know? So then I have to give lifestyle advice and prescription. Okay. You need to cut out the wine. Oh, and then what about the food? You got to eat foods that help to nourish the blood, right? So foods that are the color of blood, like maybe grapes, what else is that deep, dark purple and red pomegranates, you know, um, if people do eat some meat, um, that would be good. No, I don't know if anybody would eat liver, but liver's always good for the liver in general. You know, some of you may be vegan or plant based and you may not do that, but there's many different options in food. So it's okay. Does that, I hope that makes yeah, sense. That makes yeah. sense. But that's like, so yeah. those recommendations would come into play when they have a liver, a, a liver blood deficiency. And that again, mm-hmm. it's not like you suddenly I donated blood. It's not like, right. Just so I understand. It's like, I donate blood regularly, right. It's not like, okay, I just lost a pint of blood. That's not what you mean with liver blood deficiency, right? Or is that? I mean, you could have sudden blood loss and yes, for sure sure get some floaters and your body could rejuvenate. But if it doesn't, there's an underlying issue. Right. So that does mean that you just lost some blood. It's just that could be the case, you said, but it could also be like, maybe you can explain that a little bit more. Like, tell us what, like, what can people do? And also like, it could be five things, right? You said it could be five things related to the liver. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So you check that with the tongue and you check that with the pulse. And do you do any additional right. diagnoses in order to know which of the five liver imbalances that could be? Yes, or- because we're taught how to read the ear too. You can look at someone's ear diagnosed by that right? So I can look at someone's uterus and go, oh, that person has, you know, definitely some problems with their period. You can look at those points. There's over hundreds of points in the ear, but you really have to study that. Also, we diagnose by the smell. I know I wear a mask, but, you know, sometimes there could be a smell of someone. So don't use perfume because we can get the smell of the person and there's different smells for different organs too. And then we also listen to how people speak as well. So someone with a, let's say, hmm, uh, some, someone with a liver issue, sometimes they, they have more of a shouting voice. It's like they, they talk really loud and sometimes they don't know their volume control. <laughs> Does that make sense? And then let's say someone that has a digestion issue the way they speak, it's like, hi, how are you? It's like sing-songy. So you can already kind of tell they have sort of a mm, digestion thing. And that can deal with liver as well, liver and spleen. Uh, liver and spleen blood deficiency. So I'm like, okay, they have a digestion issue. They probably need to do some detox of the liver. We also need to nourish them. You know, does that make sense? So you listen you hear, you smell them. I mean, not that I get down and smell them. You feel the pulse, you look at the tongue, you read their whole entire health history and very easily it points to the root cause. Yeah, I was just curious about that because obviously you can do all this <laughs> online, but except for smell, that's the one thing you cannot do online. Um, but you also, because you're also coming from a functional medicine background. So you yes. do look at the Western diagnoses and the yes. health history and kind of, put all that together right so you're using that kind of right. whole like wide toolbox which is a really amazing to find out what exactly is the root cause so um so this is why i mean we said why you get eye floater so obviously our title was also a little bit catchy because you know you often see these things oh this is why you get it and that's the one minute thing you can do every day and miraculously everything goes away um <laughs> but you know that never works it never works in health it's always finding the root cause and then working with the root cause. So you mentioned hormones, you mentioned hormones. Digestions, uh, digestion. digestion. What else could be um, 
like an underlying, you know, thing that's connected to that liver imbalance that could be causing floaters or other eye problems for that matter. So liver, well, the thyroid is rooted. Now I did say hormones, but you know, just, I'm sorry, I keep going back and forth between Eastern and Western, but thyroid issues too, you know, just having underlying thyroid issues can cause that as well. Mm -hmm. So it's more floaters is more of a deficiency issue, right? It's not really an excess you know, where someone has like, um, they drink so much alcohol, their eyes are bloodshot and they just look like they're going to have a heart attack and they're large and obese. It's not that it's a deficiency pattern usually. But so the, like, so mm -hmm. what are some foods, if, because you talked about alcohol, um, what are some foods that you, or is that too general again? Does it really depend on the exact well, food? It so depends. Should not eat or drink or yes, know. these are good questions. So, because it's a deficiency pattern, usually, you know, mostly, but not all the time, it's definitely the blood deficiency. So, then you need to look at foods that will nourish blood. Like I was saying, sometimes you can just go by the color of food and it's just easy. Anything that's like red or deep purple, like eggplant or any of those right. colors. Right. Cherries. Yes. Cherries. A lot of antioxidant rich foods are usually red and those are, those are really good for you. So any, anything that's that color, I can't, for some reason, I can't think of it. It's like anything you should avoid other than wine, because wine is made from grapes, obviously, when it's alcohol. So what yeah. are things that people should not do or eat or drink uh, if they have things, things that would um, consume the yin, we say, because it would be liver. Oh, yeah, good. Someone said pomegranate. Things that would consume the yin. So, things that consume yin besides alcohol, sugar, a lot of extra phlegm type foods like cheese and dairy, like overeating it. A lot of people overeat one type of thing. So, um, and how about this? You don't have to be allergic. Well, no, people are usually allergic to like something like gluten. And if they overeat gluten, anything that they're allergic to and they overeat it and they keep doing it consumes a yin, causes a deficiency there in nutrition and also blood too, you know? So it, it just really causes, and you can see that from a functional medicine standpoint too, whenever you run those tests. And so that, that would help, um, just anything that would cause more heat in the body, processed foods, what else, you know, all the bad stuff or just overeating one thing and not doing enough moderation. You've got to eat a variety of different foods, right? But it, it's good to eat a lot of antioxidant rich foods too, in general. So, so what about that emotions and mindset and, and I, like, I know, and I know you will talk a little bit about Chinese herbs and acupressure and acupuncture and those kind of uh, treatments. But what about the, um, the, you know, the mental and emotional states? Is that something that you also address or is that more um, not really part of that treatment that you would give somebody? No, that's part of it. Because usually when people come in, they have the mindset, just fix this con Western medical condition, right? Then I have to get them thinking in Chinese medicine and then they get comfortable and then they start to feel better with whatever it is. You know, the floaters are slowly go away. They're getting the lifestyle. And I go, okay, let's talk about instead of the external or exogenous causes of diseases or symptoms. Let's talk about the endogenous. Endogenous means issues within you. And that's more on the spiritual level of Chinese medicine. So every organ represents an emotion, believe it or not. And too much of that emotion can damage and injure that organ. So for liver, that would be the emotion of anger. You know, sometimes people get so angry, they can't see straight. You know, you have those idioms that people use, right? And so like, like lungs would be grief. Um, you know, the spleen, the stomach would be uh, worry. Kidneys would be fear. So does that make sense? So every sense. single organ has a lot of different. So when I know you're asking about floaters or something, I'm like, okay, liver. And if everything in that person's health history and their pulse and their tongue and their ear and their smell, just everything kind of points to that, 
then I also, when they feel comfortable with me and trust me and I feel comfortable with them, then I go there and I go, hey, what's going on? Is there some anger, some repressed anger you want to talk about or get through? You know, do you have a counselor? So I just try to point them in the right direction so they can let it out of their body. So that's yeah. so interesting with um, in the in the vision world, we connect um, fear more to myopia and nearsightedness and anger more to farsightedness, you know, and on a kind of overgeneralized basis, maybe, but yeah. that there is definitely truth to that. So that would be interesting because somebody nearsighted with floaters, you know, maybe they have a combination of anger. And you said fear is where? Where is fear in the kidneys? Fear is in the kidneys. And oh. Yeah, that that could be more of a dry eye situation too, you know, but then also the other thing I forgot to tell you was liver and the subsidiary organ because it's a yin yang pair is gallbladder, which is also wood and gallbladder represents resentment and indecision. So there could be that too. Oh, I can relate to indecision. <laughs> <laughs> so this is so fascinating because I love that we look at not just the physical, but we look at that whole picture. So yeah. what are some things um, other than consulting with you, another tra Chinese traditional, um, traditional Chinese medicine practitioner that people could do? Are there some, or like maybe talk, if, if I, we haven't covered something, let me know. Um, or maybe you want to get a little bit into the herbs and the, and the Qigong and also the acupuncture, because I teach some simple acupressure points around the eyes in my programs. Um, but obviously acupuncture with the needles is something that you need to do with, with, the, with the practitioner. So are there some things that people can do at home um, to at least get started? We talk about the food, we talk about emotions, but are there other things that people can do watching this, something that they can implement um, that would be easy to do? Yeah. So let's go ahead. Let's talk. Why don't we talk about maybe some acupressure points? I know you all aren't going to needle your own cells, you know, there. Wow. but let's think of some points here. So this would be, let's say right around here. It's in the hollow of the eye. Oops. Right in the hollow of the eye. You can go ahead and just massage there. And that's urinary bladder one. Although for me as an acupuncturist, I would needle there. And, you know, you have to almost be doing this for a while to feel comfortable. And the, then so you can go ahead and just pressure, eye pressure, or I'm sorry, little finger pressure there, just acupressure there. That would be UB1, UB2 right here, just on the corner of your, can you see? Corner yep. of your, uh, uh, yeah, your eyebrow also massaging there would be good. Does it matter what direction the circles are in or do you need to do both directions or just can no, you press or? I, I kind of, so in Chinese medicine, it's kind of auspicious. You do three, six, and nine. So you could probably go one, two, and three, go outward, one, two, and three, you know, but don't press too hard, but press hard. But, you know, you also don't want to wrinkle yourself too. <laughs> and then you yao right here. It's like the center of your eyebrow. Mm -hmm. And if you look, it's right above the people, right? So that yeah. would be also a point for needles, right? This is an extraordinary point that is not on a meridian, right? Over here, San Zhao, which is triple. I feel some tightness in that point in the middle. What do you feel? I feel some tightness in that middle of the eyebrow point. Oh, so what listen to this. Remember, these are, I'm telling for this audience, this is all the eye stuff. But guess what? One point can treat many different things. So these are also sinus points as well. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. So also over here, and I'm going to get back to that in just a minute. We'll, we'll finish this. San Zhao 23. So it's kind of right on the outer of your eyebrow. And you kind of feel a little hollow. You feel a yep. hollow right there. That's a good one. And then another one would be like right underneath your eyes, you know, just this would be light because, you know, it's just a little light because you can feel your eyeballs there. <laughs> you don't want to push them so hard. Okay. So right underneath there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So all of those around here and then right under here. And what about, and I, also let me highlight myself again. I was just highlighting you so people can see. Oh, you yes. Points. But what about there's also the bony part of the eye socket yep. that's an indentation. So yeah, you that's we talking about the soft area that um, well it's kind of well there's actually a hole right there, but I'm sorry, it was a little soft, but see I would put the needle right there where there would be a hole and mm -hmm. that would 
like stomach one right there. Yeah, that's, I mean, I was just saying, don't press into that soft right, part, right. but it's a little right there on the orbital. Also right here, just right in the center of your forehead, GB14, gallbladder 14 right there. And just, you know, doing some eye pressure there. You could probably, I'm sure you could probably just do, you know, something like this. You know, I would just kind of go a little slow. You could hit all of those. Now I want to go back though, to when you said, oh, I feel a little pressure here at Yu Yao. Here's more of a manual lymph drainage. If you are a person that has a lot of sinuses, you also need to move that phlegm, you know, cause these are your ethmoid sinuses. So you can, if everybody wants to just start squeezing the eyebrows and if you squeeze the eyebrows and you feel a little tenderness, you've got some phlegm up there <laughs> and you want to push that phlegm out because you want as much circulation to your eyes, right? How's and that feel? Does that feel okay, yeah. Claudia? It feels Does really it... good. Yeah, no, it feels really good. Yeah. yeah. And so if you guys have some nasal issues, this would be, I know this is not a nasal group, but you know, <laughs> this is eye group, but look, it's so close. It's the sinuses and the eyes. You want all that phlegm cleared away from the eyes. So you have a lot of circulation to your eyes. So- a lot of phlegm infection, you know, so if that's good. Oh, and you can also, if you also have phlegm here, because that also will affect the eyes, this is stomach too. It's a little lower and you can go ahead and it might be tender for some of you who have some sinus issues or allergies. And, you know, sometimes you don't even need to do an allergy pill. You might just need to do a little massage, a little lymph drainage and move that stuff down, you know, and move it out of your face. Or if not sinuses, a sinus headache, and then okay. all you have to do is move that. And then your eyes feel better. And if your eyes feel better, instead of like, oh, they feel bad, then that's good for your eyes too. I hope that helped you. That was wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, teaching us that. So, but if that, you know, alone doesn't, and how often would you do that, by the way, before we move on, how often would you do that kind of acupressure? Well, uh, if you're, if you're dealing with the floaters, you would do that, you know, as many times as you can, doesn't matter, you know, you could do as many times and definitely seeing, um, you know, a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner, nationally board certified license. And I'm not saying um, no dry needling. Okay. That is not, you need to go to a certified someone who went to school for four years or eight years like me um, that can do the whole body. So you, this is your at home stuff. They can send you home with some ear seeds and then they'll do the whole body to address that pattern and then give you the prescription for food, the Chinese herbal formula, or they may customize a formula for you, right? Maybe some Qigong or whatever it is also work on your emotional stuff too. Yeah. yeah. And Qigong, Qigong, you taught a class recently that was really beautiful. Uh, mm -hmm. I really enjoy that. So basically your message is here, there is a deeper root cause that's related to some kind of liver gallbladder imbalance. And mm -hmm. we need to look specifically at the root causes for that particular person. There is no kind of cookie cutter. Everybody needs to do the same thing. The massage will definitely be beneficial to do that acupressure massage. Following the dietary recommendations that you gave us are uh, also going to be helpful. But if you really have severe floaters, you need to, you know, other eye issues, like, you know, diseases, you really need to see a practitioner to dive deeper and find out what exactly is the root cause for you. And maybe that's even a combination. I remember going to an acupuncturist and she, I, I can't remember, it was a long time ago. I think I had a kidney, something, like maybe it was kidney yin and liver yin. I don't know, but it was like, <laughs> like two things. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had all these different protocols hanging on the wall, uh, like two or three, it wasn't overwhelming, but it was like, you don't eat this, eat this. And that was really helpful. So, okay. Yeah. I'm looking at if there's any questions and also, is there anything else that you want to share? Um, let's look at questions. And then there's a few things. I know you have okay. a couple of upcoming webinars and yeah. also put all your resources into the YouTube descriptions, your, your website, your social handles. And um, also you have an eye formula that is maybe you want to talk a little bit about that. And I'm looking at questions. In the oh, yeah. Um, well, yeah, at one point it would be good. I can tell you some herbs. So that's one thing. 
um, we can talk about herbs and I could give you a couple of ideas. Um, but then as far as my eye formula, so I'm still working on the Chinese medicine part, but I do have my own naturopathic formula line. I am a master herbalist too. So I know Ayurveda, Ayurvedic herbs, Chinese medicine herbs, you know, homeopathy, naturopathy. So I know a lot of different herbs and I make my own, um, customized blends here. So, um, there it's, it's more of a naturopathic. It's not a Chinese medicine formula because I want you to be properly diagnosed, but it's eye protection support. So it has a lot of the, more of the nutrition for the eyes, you know, like your, um, beta carotene, your vitamin C, E, lutein, zeanthine, all those things, you know, and, um, so I have, it's called eye protection support. And for those of you that are attending, then you can use the coupon code Claudia15, you get 15% off there. And it's at Genesis Botanical Formula. So I'm sure you'll have a link to include there. Yeah, it's all, it's all there. And I love because yeah. your formulas are very pure. When it comes to supplements, I'm very picky. And so yours looked was really amazing to me, the composition of that. So that's something that... Anybody can do um, in addition to a really good diet, obviously. So let's look at some questions. So um, yeah. Lisa is asking on YouTube, does waking up at the same time each night indicate an organ problem? Yes. What time are you waking up? I'm curious. <laughs> I put that in the chat, what time you're waking up so we can give you more advice. In the meantime, until you type that. Um, so Chris is saying, uh, working with a naturopath due to heavy menstruations in the past three years and figured out I have fibroids and have also been dealing with eye floaters for the last oh. two years. So could that be connected? Yes, it is. So when you have fibroids, that's a whole entire liver pattern. And you got the eye thing going on too. And if you work with the, now hormones is my jam. So <laughs> I love, uh, because I was estrogen dominant cancer. So I do hormones, digestion all day long, but you definitely need to find a good Chinese medicine herbalist there because there is a really great formula to shrink fibroids. And okay. if you work with them, you know, I have shrunk grapefruit size fibroids without, because these now the reason why I did that, you know, the woman came and she's afraid of surgery, very allergic to all these Western meds. But, you know, if you find a very good acupuncturist, they can help you. So for sure. So you had somebody just finish that story with a grapefruit sized tumor or fibroid and what happened? It shrank. It shrank. And then when she went to the doctor several months later, remember, consistency is key. You can't just randomly go to the acupuncturist. You have right. to be on a good program right. Right. and you got to do the food, the diet, like everything, the whole comprehensive program. Now, when she went back, the doctor goes, oh my God, this is so crazy. The, the blood that was flowing to it, it's like not, there's no blood flowing to that. So it's not growing. And it was basically dead and shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And it was like gone. So well, I was like amazing. so excited <laughs> for her. I love that you said consistency is key because that's the same with vision improvement. It doesn't mean hours of eye exercise each day, but I always <laughs> say that. No, but it needs to be consistent and not, you know, the, the quick fix that everybody wants. Sorry, guys, in any kind of health, <laughs> there is no quick fix. And yes, we can, uh, traditional medicine solves, saves us from like death. They do amazing last minute surgeries, emergency surgeries. They help us with like things that would really, where you have to have intermediate intervention. But your, your story is another example where, you know, you had the hysterectomy, but this tumor was gone. So who knows if you even needed the hysterectomy, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the other question. So now that, so it's anyway. Yeah. We don't, we don't have to talk about that term. So she said she's waking up at 3.30. Oh, yeah. Liver time. <laughs> <laughs> is that liver time okay oh, okay no um go find a good acupuncturist or doctor of oriental medicine so um lana is asking what doing tai chi be as good as qigong yeah tai chi is great too i mean tai chi qigong comes from the umbrella of traditional chinese medicine qigong is like more meditative and you know same well they're both meditative so you know, I, I like to teach Qigong just because all my patients are so stressed and it's a little easier for them to do the same thing over and over, you know, so they're both great. I, I've heard both classes before and I realized I, I thought Qigong was a little easier for sure than to yes. try to do more complicated. But if you're already 
practitioner, like to me, this is all good stuff. It's all about relaxing and moving and connecting with your eyes and you know your your body movement and your proprioception. So that and it's relaxing. Um, right. So <laughs> somebody is asking about: Can you recommend any good uh, acupuncturists near San Jose, California? Like, is there like a you said you talked about broad certified earlier? Is there like some kind of association or website where people can find a good acupuncturist in in their area? Yes. Wait, where in California? Southern yeah, California? San Jose, that's not in California, just south of San Francisco. Oh, San Jose. Well, of course I know a couple there because that's where I finished my doctorate. At. Oh, so I have a lot of friends in San. Yes, absolutely. I will go ahead and I will email Claudia and the people I will send you to in San Jose have their doctorate. So not just their masters, at least my colleagues do. I mean, you can see anybody, but I'll give you a couple referrals there. And, send awesome. them. and people can also connect with you on your website, right? If they have a question or yes. what would be a good way for them to directly connect with you. I know we posted your so, uh, Facebook, your Instagram and everything and your website. But what's a good way if somebody has questions to kind of get oh that? Goodness. Yes, just have them um, email us on our website at Lotus Acupuncture Clinic in Virginia okay. Beach. Um, just send it to info at lahhc.com. And I, do you want me to type that in the chat? Yeah, that would be great if you could do okay, that. Okay, let me, let me see. our Zoom chat and see if there's any questions there. But we also have our little extra how wow after the live so we can always but i'm always looking at no this but there's no um i don't see any questions that would be help, like questions in terms of somebody's asking about broccoli but we can talk about that off the um oh did trisha put it in there is that the correct one uh oh yeah you put it in there too let me put that on youtube as well so that everybody on youtube has that yes yeah. and can yeah. you please please reference and since say that you were from clear vision wednesday with yeah. claudia Moonwig, so, yeah, so so we know and i go oh okay and and i'll tell the i'll tell my front desk say please forward that to me asap so they're yeah. just not i know because okay super um i don't see any more questions i'm looking at the time so we're also out of time but tell us just really quickly a little bit about the two free webinars that you have and then yes. we can put up here. Okay. So, well, upcoming. Okay. And I, I have these often, but for right now, September 14th, these are free webinars. Okay. The first one is going to be about hormones. So we're going to talk about hormones and then that's September 14th. And that is, okay, this is Eastern Standard Time. So I don't know where you guys are at. So 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay? And then um, you have to register for that. And I believe Claudia will put That's a link, link there. All in the description. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we also have um, September 27th. I believe that's a Tuesday night. So that's 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And there will also be a link for that. That's about gut health, you know, stress, inflammation. The other one's also, the other one's about hormones. This one's about gut health. So there's that. I'm thinking of coming up with another one right now, September 22nd, but those are definitely the main ones, you so know. So if somebody has floaters or eye issues, should they, which one would be the more appropriate one to attend? Or is that, it depends on the root cause. You don't well, know. Well, it also depends on the root cause. This is just for, you know, some people like, oh, even people who aren't even dealing with hormones come to my my hormone one. <laughs> so, but in the end, what I do offer, it's a free discovery call at the end. It's just a free 15 minute discovery. My um, coaches will talk to you. And then if you want to move forward, then it's just a $97, um, just one-on-one -on -one with me consult. You know, we fill out paperwork and then I get to talk to you and we create personalized uh, programs. And then, you know, we just go from there and just see, you know, what works for you or what doesn't, you know, if it's a good fit for you or not. That's so. so generous. So there's a free class that you can take. After that, you can book a free 15 minute um, quick consultation with one of your coaches. And if you want to know, and if that sounds that you want to move forward, you can for $97 have a session with Dr. Jane Dabu directly. And then if you're like, okay, I really want to do something about this, you can also um, book a package, uh, work with her. Um, that's awesome. So you have like, you have a lot of free ways to learn and learn more about um, your, your challenges. And that's awesome. And hormones, I used to think it's just sex hormones, but obviously it's all <laughs> hormones. All and hormones. You listen to fatigue and belly fat. So that's related to hormones. And so anyway, I'm, I'm trying to attend. I do my best if I'm available to attend. 
And um, we will close the YouTube live now. So connect with Dr. Dabu, send her an email or follow her on Instagram or Facebook. And if you want to join one of those webinars, and if you do decide to chat with her, make sure that you mention Clear Vision Wednesday um, mm -hmm. as the way that you found her. Okay, goodbye, you two. We see you next week. Um, the topic will be uh, grounding and the, how the feet connect to the eyes, um, balance and all that what will be the topic next week. All right, you guys, bye-bye, YouTube. Thank you so much, Dr. Jane, for being with us on YouTube. And we will...